Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Don't ask, did I lose a bet? Do I think this is cute? You'll never know, okay? Let's just jump right into this, man. Oh my God. I feel like this video is gonna be kind of controversial because of my thoughts of what transpired. This episode, which I didn't know until it ended, is called IF IFT, <laughs> but it stands for I Fucked Ted. You don't know that until the last second of the show. So we're going to start off with Jesse just because who cares? Jesse is struggling with his guilt. He's not struggling with sobriety. He's struggling with grief. And so this is something a lot of people do a lot when a, a loved one dies. They'll call their phone just to hear their um, voicemail, voice message, whatever. They'll call it until they can't anymore. And so her phone got disconnected and then he couldn't hear her voice anymore. So the program he went to, it addressed only his sobriety, right? He has to see a therapist to deal with his grief. Or, you know, like the old saying goes, it'll just take time because he is really, really struggling over the loss of Jane. It seems like he calls her phone every single day and Saul is getting sick of it. He's like, hey, I need Walt back. I need Walt to cook. I don't care if you're involved. Okay, I don't care. I need I need you to go get Walt. I need you to go get Walt. With the quickness. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to announce that I am making a manga and the Kickstarter to fund getting physical copies is live. It's launched. So if you see these around town, if you live in Chicago, don't be shy, go ahead and scan the QR code. There are several different tiers you can pledge to. You can pledge a dollar just if you believe in the project and you just wanna be supportive. You can pledge $5, again, if you want special thanks in the book and if you wanna be supportive. You can pledge $15 if you want a physical copy of the book shipped to your address and then so on and so forth. The tiers go up and up and up and the more they go up, the more privileges you get. So make sure you head to the link in my bio and make sure you make your pledge. And remember, we only have until October 28th to raise 15K. So you better act now. Head to the link in the bio to figure out who killed Susie Hanna. And it looks like at the end of the episode, Jesse has decided to cook himself, which I cannot wait to see how this is gonna go. Um, but we've seen throughout the series that Jesse does like kind of pick up on things Walt does. Like he knows the terms for the beakers and all that shit. He knows everything. So maybe he'll be able to cook how Walt cooks. And, but I do feel like there's going to be some repercussions to him trying to cook like Walt. Like maybe he's going to be like, oh yeah, Walt made this and he's going to get all the money for himself and it's going to be a shit product. And I don't see Gus being down for that. I don't see him liking that at all. So we'll just see what happens with that. I hope Jesse doesn't do something stupid. I hope he realizes, hey, I can't do this. I need Walt. So let's get to Gus. Gus and the twins and Tuco's uncle and Tuco's whatever the boss guy is. Uh, the guy who had Tortuga killed, the little snitch who was like in the police also, whatever. That guy, um, they're like, hey, we need Walter White killed. Gus is like, nope. I need him alive. I need him alive for my final deal. After my final deal, you can kill him. You can have him. You can torture him. Whatever. Who cares? I don't care. Just let me get my final deal. And the boss guy's like, hey, these two twins are nuts. They're insane. I can say I won't do anything to Walt. But what you have to worry about are these twins. They might do something to Walt. So you better do your business quickly. Because the cartel and his family members they're not gonna put up with this shit. They're not gonna fucking like this shit. They're not gonna put up with it. So Walt needs to die. He needs to be killed. And then what was interesting in this was um, Skyler's lawyer said, hey, drug dealers have a way of getting caught, you know? And I feel like that just kind of leaned more to the, like, oh, not by the police. They get caught up in shit. So if he doesn't get justice by way of the police, he's going to get killed by these twins, most likely. Walt and Jesse got lucky two times now. I feel like they're gonna luck out, like, strike three. You know what I'm saying? They lucked out with the Emilio 
relatives they lucked out with Tuco and now I feel like this there is no lucking out with this like Walt was almost dead when he snuck in his house to take a shower they were waiting for him on his bed Walt was almost a goner so these twins know how to do shit they know how to snake around they know how to meet people where they're at and stuff they know how to find people Walt is a sitting duck once he's done with business with Gus that's it for him so if he knows what's best for him I mean, like if he had omniscient view, he would keep doing business with Gus as long as feasibly possible. We need to get on a Walt. Walt moves himself back into his house. I feel like there was boss moves from both Walt and Skylar this episode. Walt moved himself back into the fucking house. He knew, he knew, okay, Walt Jr.'s on my side. Walt Jr. told him, everyone's on your side. We all know you've done nothing wrong. And Walt was like, Hmm. Well, in that case, <laughs> have you guys seen the meme? And it's like, well, in that case, and it's like a water well, a wishing well, whatever, in a briefcase. Anyways, so Walter's like, all right, fuck it. So he moves himself back into the home and he he's like, listen, Skylar, he tries to level with her. He's like, listen, 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 everything I did, I did for you in the family. I understand it was fucked up. I understand. I get that. And I have to live with those mistakes. The, all of this money, it's for you. I made all of this for you. I put my own ass on the line. You didn't ask me to. But I did all of this for you. This is your insurance. This is the house mortgage. This is college tuition. This is Holly and Walter Jr.'s tutors. They're everything. This is everything you will need for when I am gone. That is why I did this. Now, in my humble opinion... Call me a weak bitch. That would have got. That would have done it for me. That would have done it for me. I would have been like, damn. Even though what you did was fucked up and goes against my very fucking loose morals, Skylar, not me, Skylar. Even though what you did was fucked up and goes against my morals, I see how you know what you were doing. You were trying to provide for me, and it was the most efficient, effective way to do so. I understand that because, sure. Gretchen and Elliot would have paid for your medical treatment, but it's not like they would have paid for my kid's tuition, you know? And how can you ask your sister and her husband to pay for your children's tuition? It's, it's like, nobody wants to do that. So I feel, especially Skylar, she has a fucking pride of her own. She's a prideful ass, egotistical ass bitch too. So she wouldn't want to do that either. So she should see where Walt is coming from and be like, okay, yeah, like I understand. I, I get what you're coming from. But she was so appalled by the absolute gall he had in returning to the house. She was like, I cannot fucking believe this shit. I'm going to call the police. And Walt's like, I've been through scarier shit. Like I survived almost dying twice, three times. If you count him almost dying out in the wilderness, making the rest of the meth. So like, he's like, do it. He decides to call her on her bluff. And what do you know it? weak ass fucking Skylar was bluffing. She calls the police, oh, this is a dispute. I want him out, blah, blah, blah. They're like, who's on the title? She's like, oh, both of us. They're like, well, without a legal means, we can't kick him out unless you suspect him of a crime. Q Walter Jr., he's like, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with my mom. I don't know what the fuck her problem is. My my dumb ass mom, like, I don't, I don't get it. My dad hasn't done anything wrong and she just won't let him stay here. And the cops were like, okay, go to family therapy, we're gone. Anything happens, give us a call, right? Mind you, all of this would have been solved by Skylar simply telling the son in private, hey, he cheated on me. Cause my, okay, this is gonna be a side tangent, but it's important. I fucking hate people who martyr themselves and then wonder why they're in the predicament they're in. If you're gonna fucking martyr yourself, don't ask, why am I dying at the end, right? Like in a situation where, let's say there's two people in a room and there's one guy with a knife and he's like, who, who should get stabbed? You two, the two of you, vote for who should get stabbed. Now that, that would be like if person A was like, stab me. And person B was like, yeah, stab him. Person A gets stabbed and they're like, why me? Why am I getting stabbed? Oh, why me? You martyred yourself. 
You martyred yourself. Skylar martyred herself to be the bitch. Now, I completely understand she doesn't want to ruin um, the father's image in her children's eyes. Guys, I my parents had a divorce too. My mom went through the same thing. And my mom martyred herself for the first like year. She was the bitch, right? For a few years, actually. Like all those memories are so far repressed and traumatic for me. I don't even remember half of that shit. But my mom martyred herself and she was the bitch. And so you wonder why your kids are snappy with you when in their brain, what you're doing is just unjust to someone they love. It's their father. They're supposed to love their father. So all they see from their perspective is you being a bitch to the father for no fucking reason. Oh, what? Like in my case, personal anecdote, my dad goes from the master room to a side room to one of the extra bedrooms. You know, why is dad an extra bedroom? Who cares though, right? It's an extra, it's a bedroom, who cares? My dad goes from the extra bedroom to the basement. Okay, mom, why are you doing that? Stop. Why the fuck? Why Why do you have dad in the basement? That is some bogus shit. What could he have done that, that's so bad that you have dad sleeping in the basement? Dad goes from the basement to moving out. Okay, bitch. There's nothing he could have done that was that bad that you need to punish him. He can't even live in the house anymore. Are you kidding me? And all of it could have been solved by having an age appropriate conversation. What was I, 12 when, uh, 12 or 11 when he was moved out? All of that could have been solved by a conversation. Your dad did X. That is why, you know, age appropriate, right? I'm 12. You don't have to give me the details and the nitty gritty, um, whatever. You know, you can just tell me some age appropriate things. So I'm not just thinking you're a bitch and you're punishing dad for absolutely no reason. Because in a kid's brain, they just think, oh, you don't love him anymore. You know, you just fell out of love. So now you're being a bitch to him. You know, you know how unfair that sounds? Oh, you don't like him anymore. So now you're being a bitch to him. You know what I'm saying? So you have to give kids an age appropriate explanation as to why you're doing what you're doing. Because kids are curious. They always want to know why, 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 why. So if you choose to martyr yourself and be the bitch... I'm not gonna tell you what he did. I'm not gonna tell you. And then you, you're, you're high moral, so you're not even gonna lie or give a little something to satiate the people wondering. Your dad decided he didn't love mommy anymore, so your dad found someone that he loves a little bit more. Perfect. 12 year old, 13 year old, age appropriate. Your dad is cheating. He cheated on me. That's why he's getting the fuck out of the house. Skyler could have lied to Walt Jr. Um, your dad cheated, okay? So that is why this is happening. You know, I tried to live with it for some time. I've been knowing this for some time, Walt Jr. Think of how much mommy has been suffering. Feeling unloved and like the second woman, even though I'm the wife. Yeah, so your dad has to go somewhere else. Walter Jr. would be like, damn, my dad's a dick, you know, like, that's fucked up. So why are you choosing to be the bitch rather than have Walt be the bitch? You know, you're choosing to be the bitch. And it's like, you could have been the good guy. Instead of making Walt the good guy by your own silence, you're making yourself the bad guy by your own silence. And you're making Walt the good guy. You can be the good woman Oh, I just love my kids and I love my husband so much, but he cheated on me, so he has to get out of here. Oh, if you don't want him arrested and shit, right? Oh, cheating isn't illegal, so fuck it, who cares? He cheated, so he has to leave. Oh, isn't that sad? Skylar's dumbass is keeping everything completely silent. So she decided to martyr herself. She has no, like, reason to be like, oh... Walt Jr. hates me so much, bitch. You should have told him something, anything. You're lying for your boss, Ted. Why is he the only one you can do dishonest stuff for? And this is my only problem with Skylar, the inconsistency, the hypocrisy. They're my only problem with her. Everything else I understand to a T. Yes, Skylar, call the cops on Walt. Do it if you stand for anything. Yes, quit your job. If you stand for anything. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like this woman doesn't stand for anything. There's all these different rules and stuff. Obviously there's nuances like the relationship is different with the sister. The relationship is different with the boss. For some reason, he's getting preferential treatment over the husband. Obviously, you know, there's also the nuance of the level of crime. There, there's so many nuances. But my problem is it's just inconsistent. It's inconsistent. If you have a moral, then come rain or shine, your moral should be the fucking same. Skylar's inconsistent and I fucking hate that. I hate her for that. I really do. That's a moral I have. Consistency. Damn. <laughs> And we look at my little boyfriend situation and it's like, he's not so consistent. Damn, do I hate myself a little bit? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah. Full stop. Anyway. <laughs> I cannot deal with people who have like inconsistent morals. Like it's this for this person. It's that for this person. It's that for that person. I can't deal with it. So while Walt moving back into his house was a boss move and I was like, like I, I had conflicting emotions. I was like, I'm kind of rooting for you, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, you know, yikes. I'm kind of like, oof, like I'm rooting for you. But like at the same time, I would understand why Skylar would feel very uncomfortable with him in the house. Uh, she doesn't even want to leave the room until she's sure Walt left. She, you know, she's just really uncomfortable and I do feel her for that. Cause like, if you no longer want to be in a relationship, it is really hard to see who gets the house, who gets X, Y, and Z. And it is more times than not the man who has to leave. And I see how that can be like seen as not fair or whatever. I do understand all of that. But at the same time, um, I do think, uh, I do think it's, ugh, how do I say this without sounding like a, a dog? Skylar cheating on Walt. So I understand she's doing everything in her power to get him to accept a divorce we're getting divorced whether I have to force you to or not what what she told her lawyer was oh I'm gonna just wait for him to fucking die I guess and it's so interesting in the beginning of the series she was like please prolong your life please do anything you can to live longer that's what she was saying now she's at the point where she's like I want this motherfucker to die ASAP and I'm wait I'm counting the days and just that shift, just that character development is awesome. I fucking love that. However, I do want to say, cheating is a different monster. It's not the same, guys. Skylar is trash. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not the same. Obviously, what Skylar did isn't illegal, right? Like we were talking about, what Skylar did is not illegal, but... You know, uh, obviously it's morally corrupt. So is selling drugs, right? In some people's morals. But I don't think Walt has ever agreed to never break the law. The same way as when you get married to someone, you have vows and you kind of commit yourself to one person. I do. And maybe this is internalized misogyny, guys. Maybe I'm internally misogynistic. But I do really feel like cheating is crossing the line. Obviously the relationship is over. Obviously they're separated, not legally, but socially. They are separated. Uh, Walt would like to work on things. Skylar would like Walt out of their lives. Um, I mean, it's his kids at the same, at the end of the day, it's his kids. And so what is, you know, uh, Walt going to prison serving time and then coming out being with his kid? What is the difference between that and Walt now? Does that make sense? Like, if everything is so by the law and that's what Skylar cares about, by the law, by the law, by the law, when Walt gets out of prison, what, then are you fine with him seeing his kids? You know what I'm saying? And you can't keep a father away from his kids. He fucking cares about his kids. And obviously Walt Jr. cares about him. So off the bat, that is kind of bogus, albeit understandable. Very understandable. I understand Skylar completely. What I'm trying to say is, you know, like going against those vows before anything's finalized or anything, like as a means to try and get things finalized, I feel like it's not the same. Skylar's kind of trashy as fuck for that. She's pretty trashy for that. But honestly, um, you know, her telling Walt, he brought that upon himself. He was like, oh, um, honesty feels so good after lying to Skylar for like 
six months or however long that was. And Skylar's like, honesty feels so good. Okay, how's this for honesty? I fucked Ted. How's that? Hmm? Hmm? And Walt looks distraught as fuck. I cannot wait to see the next episode. I, 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 I'm not team Skylar. I'm really not. I understand everything she did. And I understand that maybe I am being a little internally misogynistic. Like this is somebody who broke the law and affected uh, kids' lives by helping the parents get strung out on meth. Somebody who selling meth to the community, which is really bad for the community. But, you know, I, I do understand how fucking drastically bad that is, how against the law that is, and the harm that that causes to, to the society, to the town he lives in, to wherever he sold. I understand that. But at the same time, I also understand that cheating on your husband, even if the divorce isn't finalized, if even if you're separated and the husband's still trying to work on shit, even if it was the other way around, the wife's still trying to work on shit and the husband goes and fucks someone else, I do feel like that is very wrong and that deserves to be condemned. And that is not cool at all. But, you know, putting it into context with everything that Skylar went through, I understand why she did that. She wants a divorce by any means necessary, by any means necessary. And she feels like everything you know, their relationship stood for was infringed upon when she found out all the lies, the second phone, not going to the mom's house, you know, not flying, uh, all the gaps in times, the fugue state, all of that shit. She feels like, okay, this is me finally getting back at that. You can live here. Fine. Fuck you. Even though it's against my wishes that you live here. Fuck you. Go ahead. Live here. Go ahead. Turn my teenage son against me. But I'm going to do one thing that I can do. And that is take ownership over my own body. Fuck whoever the fuck I want to. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because I do not want to be in this relationship with you anymore. And that's trash, but valid. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Can't wait to... Watch the next one. I'm probably going to watch it right now, guys, because this is getting juicy as fuck. Ah! Okay. Bye. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot to talk about Hank. Hank. Oh, fuck. This is going to be another, like, five minutes. So Hank is one of those officers where I feel like they're trying to make a commentary about, like, most officers. Most of these batshit crazy-ass officers who do, like, um, what's it called? Over-aggression? What's the word called? Over-aggression? brute force, lethal force, police brutality, police brutality. Most of these cops that do that stuff, I feel like, um, I feel like the show is kind of trying to say that they are psychologically, um, I can't think of any phrases right now. They're psychologically impaired. They have PTSD. They have PTSD from the things they've seen, right? Officers are first responders to some of the worst shit Ever. We got first responders to plane crashes. We have first responders to like a fire, the aftermath of fire. First responders to like a shootout crime scene. Officers see a lot of shit in their line of work. You know, they participate in shootouts. Sometimes it's up to them. You know, they have to kill the school shooter, the mass shooter. The cops have to do a lot. They really do. And this all impacts their psyche. So we're seeing Hank fucking snap. He goes into this club he antagonizes these people who he suspects has drugs. He antagonizes them until the point where like it starts a fight. Of course, they don't know he's a fucking cop. But of course, once it gets back to the chief, oh, they incited a fight with me. Um, I was just doing my duty. I was investigating and they started a fight with me. So, you know, and he does use brutal force on them. He busts the one guy's mouth and he busts the other guy the back of his head. And it's like... I feel like it's a commentary on cops that we have now. Like, okay, these are all very psychologically impaired people due to the PTSD of working their line of work um, and seeing such horrible things. Hank is not excited to go back to El Paso. No, no way. No, he's not. And when he got that call, he was like, yay. So in my opinion, what he was trying to do was trying to get in trouble or trying to get killed in that bar. I feel like he was trying to like go out of his uh, partner's 
you know, field of vision so he can do some fucked up shit, so he can get in trouble, so he can't be promoted back to El Paso, or he was trying to get fucking killed by these drug people. And that's why he left his gun under the seat. Either way it goes, I don't know. I'm just interested to see what happens next and bye.